Isaac Newton. An apple falls on his head. Boom! The law of gravity. We've heard this story for generations, until we all believe the same myth. That creativity is a rare flash of genius that strikes a chosen few. Here's the part they never tell you in school. That apple wasn't magic. It was math. Every creative genius you admire Picasso, Einstein, Steve Jobs, wasn't waiting for inspiration. They were following hidden mathematical patterns. Today, I'll break down the formulas behind creativity itself. And by the end, you won't be waiting for your next idea. You'll be engineering it. Chapter 1. The Stupidity of Waiting for Inspiration Have you ever sat around waiting for the perfect idea to strike? That's the first mathematical mistake most people make. Dean Keith Simonton, a leading psychologist who studied over 2,000 creators throughout history, discovered something that changes everything. Creative success isn't about talent alone. It follows statistical probability. The more attempts you make, the higher your chances of producing a masterpiece. It's literally the law of large numbers applied to human creativity. Think about Thomas Edison. He filed 1,093 patents in his lifetime. Most of them completely forgettable. But hidden in that massive pile were the light bulb, the phonograph, and the motion picture camera. Same with Picasso. He created over 20,000 works of art, but only about 50 to 100 define his legacy today. Johann Sebastian Bach composed over 1,000 pieces of music. We remember maybe 20. Here's the equation. More attempts equals higher probability of breakthrough. It's simple math, but psychologically, it's brutal. Why do we wait for inspiration instead of just creating? Fear of failure. But mathematically, failure is the formula. Every no you get, every bad idea you produce, statistically increases the odds of your next yes. If you want one great idea, you need to generate 100 bad ones first. That's the 10 to 1 ratio that geniuses understand but never talk about. Chapter 2. Zip's Law. Why most of your ideas will suck. Here's the harsh truth nobody tells you. 80% of your creative output will be mediocre, and that's not a personal failing. That's mathematically guaranteed. Enter Zipf's Law, a principle from mathematics and linguistics. It says that in any large data set, the frequency of outcomes follows a predictable power law curve. A tiny fraction of results are extraordinary. Some are pretty good, but most are average or below average. Apply this to creativity, and you see the pattern everywhere. In music, 1% of songs become hits, while 99% are forgotten within months. In publishing, one book becomes a bestseller for every thousand that get published. On YouTube, one video goes viral for every hundred uploads. The curve is relentless and universal. But here's where smart people make a critical error. They create 10 things, see that 9 are mediocre, and conclude they lack talent. They quit. But Zip's Law says you need to produce 100 things to find your one masterpiece. You need to climb through the mediocrity to reach the outliers. Carl Jung understood this psychologically. He said, we don't fear failure. We fear our own potential. We stop creating not because we lack ability, but because we can't tolerate being average 99 times before we're exceptional once. That discomfort? That's the price of admission to creativity. The math doesn't care about your feelings. So stop judging your early work. Start tracking your creative at-bats like a baseball player tracks statistics. You're not failing. You're filling the quota that probability demands. Chapter 3. Combinatorial Creativity. The Remix Formula. Think the iPhone was an original invention? Think again. It's a phone plus an iPod plus an internet device. Steve Jobs didn't create something from nothing. He recombined existing elements 
in a new way. And that's actually how most creativity works. Margaret Bowden, a pioneer in cognitive science, argues that creativity is 90% combinatorial. You take existing building blocks and rearrange them into novel patterns. Mathematically, this is powerful. If you have just 10 core concepts in your mind, you can create over 1,000 unique combinations. With 20 concepts, the possibilities explode into the hundreds of thousands. Look at hip-hop. It's sampling old records plus new beats plus lyrical storytelling. Uber and business, it's traditional taxi service plus smartphone apps plus GPS technology. Nothing truly new, just recombined brilliantly. Here's why this matters psychologically. We think creativity requires genius-level intelligence or some mysterious gift. Wrong. It requires a library. The more diverse building blocks you collect in your mind, the more combinations you can generate. Reading across disciplines isn't procrastination. It's gathering ammunition. Schopenhauer said talent hits a target no one else can hit, while genius hits a target no one else can see. But both use the same arrows. They're just recombined differently. Your practical move? Use what I call the 2 plus 1 remix method. Take two completely unrelated ideas from different fields and add your unique perspective. That's your combination. That's your creative edge. Chapter 4. The Exponential Curve. Why? The first 1,000 hours feel like failure. Here's a question. Why do most beginners quit creative pursuits within the first year? Because they expect linear progress. But creativity doesn't work that way. It follows an exponential curve. In the first 100 hours of practice, you might improve by 5%. It feels like nothing. You're grinding, struggling, producing garbage. Hours 500 to 1,000? Maybe 20% improvement. Noticeable, but still frustrating. But after 1,000 hours, something changes. Growth accelerates exponentially. Suddenly, breakthroughs come faster. Skills compound. What took 100 hours to learn now takes 10. Think of it like compound interest in finance. At first, your returns are tiny, but time amplifies the effect. The curve starts flat, then suddenly it shoots vertical. Stanford research on neural pathways confirms this. In creative tasks, your brain forms connections slowly at first. Then, they cascade. The breakthrough doesn't happen at 10,000 hours. It happens because of all the invisible accumulation before that moment. But here's the trap for smart people. High IQ individuals expect immediate results. When creativity feels impossibly hard at hour 100, they assume they lack natural talent, so they quit. But mathematically, they're quitting right before the curve goes vertical, right before all that accumulated effort pays off. Nietzsche said, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. But only if you stay long enough to compound the gains. Most people leave the gym right before the muscle grows. Your job isn't to judge results at hour 100. Your job is to track hours and trust the mathematics of exponential growth. The curve doesn't lie. Stay in the game. Chapter 5. The Edge of Chaos, Where Breakthroughs Live There's one more mathematical principle at play, and it's fascinating. It comes from complexity theory. Creativity emerges at what scientists call the edge of chaos. The delicate balance between total randomness and rigid order. Too much structure, and you get no novelty. You're an assembly line, repeating the same patterns forever. Too much chaos, and you get incoherence. Random noise with no meaning. But right in between? That's where the magic happens. That's where unexpected but meaningful patterns emerge. Mathematicians study this using models called cellular automata. When you run the simulations, you see it clearly. Pure order creates repetitive patterns. Pure randomness creates static. But tune the system to the edge, that boundary zone, 
and suddenly you get rich, complex, beautiful structures. That's exactly where human creativity lives. Think about jazz improvisation. Musicians follow structure, scales, chord progressions. But within that framework, they improvise freely. Too much structure, and it's boring, classical repetition. Too much chaos, and it's unlistenable noise. The genius is in the balance. Scientific discovery works the same way. You need disciplined methodology, the structure. But you also need wild hypotheses and unexpected experiments, the chaos. Startups that succeed balance process with experimentation. Artists balance technique with spontaneity. Your practical formula? Aim for 70% structure and 30% chaos. Build routines and disciplines that create a foundation, then deliberately inject randomness. Try new things. Break your own patterns. Live at the edge, the creativity equation. So here's the mathematics of creativity, decoded. Creativity equals quantity, multiplied by combinations, multiplied by time, divided by fear, plus perfectionism. Your action plan is simple. 1. Produce more. Generate 10 times what you think you need. The law of large numbers is on your side, but only if you play the game. 2. Recombine relentlessly. Collect diverse inputs from different fields and mix them in unexpected ways. 3. Compound your hours. Trust the exponential curve. Don't quit when growth feels invisible. And four, find your edge. Balance discipline with experimentation, structure with freedom. The next time you sit around waiting for inspiration to strike, remember this. Genius isn't magic. It's math. And now you know the formula. As Bertrand Russell said, the stupid are cocksure while the intelligent are full of doubt. Don't let self-doubt stop you from doing the math. Start creating. Start now. This video is competing against 99 others right now. Help it win. Subscribe. Drop a comment with your biggest takeaway. And share this with someone stuck waiting for inspiration.